Okay, so welcome back guys. In the next 20 minutes or so, we'll go through uh, modifying and adding in the final shader to the glass plane here. And then we'll go through adding in some extra highlights here by modifying the HDR map. And then I'll also go through how to um, set up a turntable to render. So Keyshot can also render turntables and simple animations. So we'll quickly cover that as well. And then we'll go through the final render settings uh, to render this out. So the first thing that we'll go ahead and do is we'll modify the HDR. So if you go to our project window and then go to our environment here and click edit, this window here will pop up. So I'll drag this to the other side so it's out of our way. And then let me just resize this so we see this better. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and add in our glass material. So I'm gonna bring up my library and type in glass. And I'll use this glass basic gray for this plane here. Okay, so now let's see through as well. Okay, so once that's done, let's go back to our edit HDR window. So what I wanna do is all these reflections on the top look great and I quite like it. And we also forgotten actually to add the uh, the shaders for the USB port here. But for this angle that I'm using currently, uh, we're not really gonna need it. So I'm gonna leave it out just to save some time. Maybe if we have some time at the end, then we will add those in as well. So I wanna use roughly this angle here, okay? So we got some nice reflections here on the top, I mean highlights. And I also wanted to get some subtle highlights going across here on the side and maybe lighten this part up of the case as well. And to do that, the majority of the lighting is pretty good. So what we need to do is just modify this HDR to add some extra lights in. So we can also make adjustments in this window here. As you can see, we can uh, contrast and blur it and so on and tilt and rotate that we've already done. And we can also change the saturation and the hue of the image. But I like all that, I just wanted to add some extra lighting. So if you go to our pins tab, as you can see here, we can add a couple of pins or as many as we like. So let's just go ahead and click on add. And you'll notice that we'll have this little spot here on our HDR. Now we can also modify this so we can change the radius if it's a circular one, or we can change this to be a rectangular one. And then we can change the width and height and we can change the angle and so on. So basically this is just setting up um, lights or extra lights that we would like in our scene. So what I wanna do is I wanna move this light somewhere so we can see a reflection on the side of our case or a sort of a specular reflection. So let's just go ahead and move this to the side and we can see where this light roughly is. And as you can see, it's gonna be roughly here on the right. Okay, so you see there that it's roughly a bit brighter. You can also rotate this. Maybe let's rotate around this way. So you get that sort of highlight there. You can see across here. Now let's just go ahead and move this a bit lower down and I also wanted to make this a bit smaller so let's just change the width and then change the height as well so I only wanted, wanted this to be really small okay so roughly let's see okay so that's the minimum that we can do so what I'm gonna do is actually I'll make it fairly large around there and move it higher up maybe somewhere across there. So you get that light reflection on the glass, see here. Now, next what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the fall off. Maybe a bit more, a bit less. Okay, and let's just reduce the brightness because it's way too bright for what I want. So I just wanted this really start light reflection on this glass here, okay. Maybe let's make it a little bit bigger. Oh, 
height doesn't really matter. I like that angle. And let's just go ahead and let's see what happens if we blend it. It gets really, really um, subtle. So let's just tune up the brightness a little bit more. Okay. So I just wanted that really subtle reflection on the glass. Now, after we've done that, we can also add another one. So let's just add another one. Let's add a circular one. And I want to brighten this area up just a tiny bit because up here it was a bit too dark. So I'm going to roughly move this where it needs to be, which is roughly here. And then again, we're just going to go ahead and turn down the brightness because I only want to brighten this area up a tiny bit. Okay, so let's just see how that looks. Maybe increase it a little bit more. Okay, so you can tweak around with these. You can add as many as you want, different shapes and so on to get your um, lighting as you like. So I'm not gonna mess around with this too much now. And then we can go ahead and render out our final image. So if you wanted to render out a single image, we can go to render and then go to render. And then in here, there are many different settings that we can mess with, as you can uh, imagine. We can go to PNG and so on, and set our resolution. So let's set this to be 1920, maybe at 300 DPI. And then here, we can, for the PNG, we can check to include alpha. So it will render out our transparency. And in the quality, if you go on the quality, we can go on maximum time. So, for example, if you only want this to render for 10 minutes, you can set this for 10 minutes and it will finish after 10 minutes. Now, obviously, uh, the more complex your model is, the less details it will render within that time. So, but it's a very useful tool. If you just wanted a quick render, you can set this to be one minute or five seconds or so on. So, for example, if I set this to be a 10 second render, and then hit render, and then let's just discard this because we modify the HDR. Now let's see how fast this will render out. Well, it should be under 10 seconds, but we can get an idea of how uh, good this is going to look in 10 seconds. Okay. So as you can see, if you only let it go for 10 seconds, it's not going to render out all this detail here, but we can get a really quick idea of what the case looks like. Okay. So it's a very useful tool. Now, the second way of rendering, you can go to maximum samples and then play around with this. If you don't want to go to the crazy settings over here, we'll go through in a second. So you can set this to be around 64 and see how long it takes to render and you can pump it up if you wish. Now the third way is the advanced control where you can control the samples. I normally go with around 32 and six for this is around fine uh, for me. My computer renders uh, these images pretty fast, so I normally turn these up to like 12. Uh, Anti-aliasing, I normally render with around 4. The shadow is normally around 4 as well. Obviously, you can play around with these and see what works best. Now, global illumination, I normally set it to about 2 and pixel blur to about 1.5. And then if you have depth of field in the camera that you turn on in the camera settings, then you can set that here as well. Sharp shadows and sharp texture filtering, you can check these on as well. Now let's hit render and see how, what sort of result we get. Now I'm recording here and I'm also recording sound. So I'm recording screen and sound as well. But as you can see, it renders pretty fast, even with these settings. Now if I stop this and just go to maximum samples and set this to about 16, you'll notice how fast um, this will render considering the fact that I'm recording sound and I'm recording the screen as well. Okay, so as you can see, Keyshot renders pretty fast with a pretty uh, decent computer. Okay, so let's not go ahead and watch how uh, it renders in five minutes. I mean, normally it takes to um, get a good render with advanced control with roughly around these settings, about 32, 6, 4, uh, 4 in this or 2, and then 2 on global Ill illumination. Normally something like this, it takes me about 2 to 5 minutes when I'm not rendering. I normally never really have anything that goes over 10 minutes and I get a really nice render. 
you can also queue up things here and you can also turn on passes okay so these are the only passes that Keyshot can render out for you um, I normally don't really use these uh, at the moment the only useful one for me at the moment is the alpha transparency so if I want to change the background and so on and that's very useful so that's the one downside that you can't render out um, loads of different passes but there are some passes uh, that you can render out okay so you can still render out some passes and then you can bring them into Photoshop to render them I mean to uh, modify them inside Photoshop so let's just go through the um, Keyshot VR before we wrap this part up so inside here you can see that you have Keyshot VR I think it's a new feature I'm not exactly sure what version this came in but anything from 4 and above will have this I'm pretty sure so in Keyshot VR as you can notice you can go ahead and create a turntable for your um, model you can also do or pick different sort of rotations that you want okay so as you can see and you can also set custom rotations as well so if you go onto um, turntable and then click next, we can select what the rotation center is. So we can select our object or our environment and so on. And then you can set your camera axes where you want it to um, be. So I can go ahead and move my camera dolly. I can change the orbit where it starts, the elevation and so on. Okay, and once we click next, you can go ahead and select how many frames we want it to render. Okay, so let's say 36. And once you hit next, you can select the resolution where you want the images to be. And then also underneath here, you can set the render options. And it's basically the same options that we have further up. Okay, so you can play around with these as well. So once you set this all up, you hit render and you will have your series of images that then you'll need to um, compile into a video file so bear in mind that you don't get an actual video file that's a turntable you get loads of different frames and then you will have to compile that with a third party or another editing software like Sony Vegas or something else okay so thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoy this series and thanks for watching plus plus